So I wanted to do a quick exercise. If you guys will bear with me. I know you just had a break. Um, but when I call out your group, if you would please stand and remain standing. Um, how many veterans or active duty military do we have in the room? Can you stand for me? And remain standing? Thank you for your service. I know everyone tells you that. And stay standing for a second. How many in the room actually have a family member or a spouse who is in the military community? Can you stand? Thank you for your service support too, because they can't do it without you. Now we'll add to that group. How many of you have a friend or neighbor who is somehow in the military community? And then last but not least, who has had a buyer, seller, or a renter who is activity or a veteran? Please stand. Now you see, if you look around the room, why I'm so passionate about this topic and why it's so important you're having the day today. So thank you everyone, you can be seated. That was just another way of demonstrating. Um, my name is Karen Hall. I'm the co-founder and principal broker of At Home Real Estate. We are a boutique brokerage headquartered in Old Town, Alexandria. But I've had some amazing opportunities over the 12 years of my career to talk specifically about military relocation. I've gotten to talk to radio stations like NPR, WAMU, uh, Real Estate Today, uh, so cool publications including Military Times. Uh, recently I was asked to start authoring blogs for militarybyowner.com. I think one was supposed to publish two hours ago and I haven't checked yet. <laughs> and then all kinds of cool stuff with the Inc. 500 magazine. They have a military entrepreneur program. So amazing activities and opportunities with that to travel all over. Uh, it was really an honor even to have the National Association call and ask me my opinion on policy papers they were putting together on legislation they wanted to support for housing initiatives for military. And that was really a great honor. And then earlier this year, uh, the National Association called again and they featured our company as a broker standout for 2016. Uh, we're, I'm pretty passionate about reinventing the value of our entire industry and us providing services that people can't Google. And so that's a totally different topic and soapbox for another day. But today I get to talk to you as another highlight. So I know many of you already work with military clients. It is a prominent lead by a lot of these relocation companies. I know you all heard Cardis in USA, but any lead that you get, no matter whether it's coming from a corporate relo or a military, that's really your opportunity to exceed someone's expectations and build a relationship. So what I'm talking about today is a little bit different because it is that relationship side of things. It's your opportunity to grow your sphere of influence, your book of business, your database, whatever you call it, it equates to more money and more fun for you <laughs> and more opportunities. One of my company's core values is we work with people, not transactions. And before you can do that, you really got to understand and appreciate those that you're working with. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about how the military community is different than the civilians, how to, you can make the most out of their move for them and for you. And then we'll talk a little bit, I've wrapped up some of my tips of working just exclusively with military over my career. So again, for you numbers people, according to one statistic, in 2014 there were 720,000 veterans living in the state of Virginia alone. 82,000 are in Fairfax County, but 62,000 are in Virginia Beach. We had a little thing going back and forth last night, a little competition over where they, they were. But there's 27 bases throughout the state of Virginia serving every branch of service. A third of those 720,000 are ages 35 to 55, which is prime age for buying and selling homes. So now we know how they look as a statistic. Who are these people? The very first time I was interviewed, it actually was for a radio station, and I was shocked they were even asking me, but their burning question was, how is a military move different than a civilian? And I couldn't believe they were even asking, and it was a genuine question for them. And that was more than 10 years ago when I was just known around town as the Hummer lady, because I drove this bright yellow H2 Hummer, which is the big one, had my name on it, my website, um, military specialists, all the military seals, which by the way, don't do that either. <laughs> um, don't put military seals on your advertising, including your vehicle. Your clients may staunchly defend you and your patriotism, but it implies that you've been endorsed by a branch of service. So it's not really a good thing with everyone. Um, but anyway, time passes. Now a decade later, the internet has certainly changed the way consumers value us in general. 
um, communication has drastically changed, right? But I find that military clients haven't really changed that much. <laughs> so you take your typical civilian buyers. Sometimes they can look for a while, they get discouraged, they maybe lose a couple of bidding wars, they have time to save up down payments, they can figure out what neighborhoods they love, and I know this isn't necessarily applied to a lot of these reload guys either, but it's more the civilian aspect of things. You could get a civilian relocation. It could be short, like short time, meaning they don't have a lot of notice. But a lot of times those reloads are due to a job promotion or even a new job, so they're excited about it. And it may even come with a package of benefits that helps offset the cost of their move. Now you contrast that with one of my military clients who recently emailed me. It says, he was writing me about his primary and secondary course of action to take custody of a house. <laughs> and that was for a rental. <laughs> the typical military move is with very little notice, an undercurrent of desperation, an unfamiliarity of where they're going, and honestly a distrust that even though their orders say that, that that's even going to be where they end up. They have sticker shock, unless they're coming from parts of Colorado or maybe California, and then we tell them that we measure commutes here in minutes instead of miles. And they know that even when they get here, they have their orders, that could be changed. And it doesn't matter if they have um, a contract and to buy their dream home or they've already signed a lease. We had that in our office last month. Someone was about to pick up their keys for a rental and they got an email saying the Navy needed them elsewhere. So they are more challenging to build relationships with in the traditional sense that you're used to. Maybe a civilian or even a relocation, they're very transient but you kind of win them over, you stay in touch, you do a good job, you reward them for referrals, and then you become their longtime friends, hopefully. But military don't form bonds with people in the same way. They don't even unpack all their boxes when they move houses. I'm sure you've shown houses or been in houses and you see cardboard boxes with three different colored stickers and numbers all over them, and you know it's a military family that lives there. But they do have friendships that cover huge distances in time and miles because they might cross paths again at a future assignment at a base. And simply having in common that they all lived at a base, that in, in part brings the camaraderie that they have. I have a whole pool of clients that came from just the fact that once upon a time, we were all stationed at Fort Drum, New York. Is anyone familiar with Fort Drum, New York? It's known as the land of the frozen chosen. I see a couple of you chuckling. It's 20 minutes south of the Canada border, and I am not kidding, Alaska came there to train for cold weather. So now I have all these clients that just randomly, you know, they'll send me a note and, and that's built a lot of my business. That's kind of what I built my entire career on. I started my career in real estate when my husband got out of the military and we started trying to buy our first home and we were just having a bad experience doing so. And I knew nobody, we we're up in Northern Virginia. I'm from Georgia, now that you could tell from my accent. Um, but my parents still live in the same log house on seven and a half acres of land with a lake and a dirt road that they built when I was in the fourth grade. So to me it was four, and I'm an only child, so it's not like I have family across the country either. And I certainly didn't know anything about real estate. I am pretty sure I wandered into a broker open house at one point as a buyer and didn't know I was like walking into a shark tank or something, you know. Um, but I did know was that my experience standing in the line at the post office with a plain cardboard box filled with pogey bait and essentials going to some APO address somewhere on the other side of the world right after 9-11 qualified me to know something about serving the special needs of this demographic. And it was just my stubborn confidence that told me anybody going through one of the most stressful times of their life buying or selling a home deserved better than what we were experiencing. And then I embraced that I had a niche. I talked to a lot of agents, and they're so hesitant to miss one piece of business. They want to be everything to everyone, don't want to miss out, so they're afraid to specialize. But the beautiful thing about a niche is those people will tell everyone how amazing you are at what you do. And they're so loyal, they will send you random Facebook messages 10 years later saying, you know, this person needs your help. So I did mention how communication has changed. Social media is huge now, right? We've already kind of alluded to it with a couple of the speakers. But Facebook especially, people are going to as a giant, the ultimate crowdsourcing. They're going on there for research. I mean, I'm sure some of you roll over in the morning and you go there for news. 
you know? I don't even watch TV. I just look on Facebook and see what happened the next day, the previous day. Um, but news, support, research, that's where people are going is for Facebook. Especially when you're trying to meet military clients, they move far away and it's a great platform to connect with. And I know there's others in Instagram. I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. Even my teenager's given up on me. So um, Twitter, all those things, but the demographic that we're finding in the military and the age group is usually Facebook. So I thought I would share a few tips about using Facebook for business. Um, the first off is don't plast your personal page with send me referrals. Who do you know that's moving? Look how amazing I am. Um, people relate to stories and they have since the beginning of time. Take them on your adventures. Share with them your trials and your tribulations on behalf of your clients. Tell them why you're a realtor. I find um, people are paying attention, even if they aren't liking and commenting on your, your post. I know Melanie does tons of the social media. But I've had people on Facebook that I get a message and nobody has ever thumbs up or anything I've ever done and they will send me a Facebook message where they've connected me with another Facebook friend and it just says, here's Karen, contact her, these people are moving to DC. Even some of my newer agents, they felt, well, they hadn't closed a deal yet, so they had nothing to talk about. But then in talking to them, we realized they had this revelation that what I was posting about was more the process of things. So it could be, oh, look how adorable my new client is, and it's a picture of someone's baby, with their permission, of course. Or it could be, you know, oh, so excited, I'm, I finally get to see these clients again, haven't seen them in three years. But you're talking about what you're doing in real estate without asking for things. And then secondly, um, I see classes all the time about building Facebook, you know, using Facebook to build business. And I haven't attended them. I get told about the, co the content and how it goes. But the real way to use Facebook for business is you pay attention to what's going on in people's lives. You know, what, what are they saying? What are they doing? If somebody says they're nervous about something or excited about something, that's now your opportunity to pick up the phone or send them a handwritten note and say, just wanted to wish you good luck on your job interview next week. Or congratulations on Johnny getting his black belt last week. I knew he would do fabulous. But that's how you use Facebook to generate business. Now it should go without saying, but I know we're in a political season, so I'll throw out my opinion on that anyway, is just keep your rants to yourself, your political rants to yourself, or in person or in small groups. Um, I've known agents, is why I say that, that she was getting a false positive and she said, you know, all these people are so engaged in my posts when I post these political opinions and things because people were piling in. But then when she ran into them in person, what they were bringing up was, hey, how'd that ever work out with that family? You were out, you know, showing a house for them. Did, did they find their dream home? And it kind of was a big aha moment for her. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> And then, of course, there are forums for realtors everywhere, right? Northern Virginia, Fairfax County, wherever you are, Alexandria City, brokers open houses, sharing opinions, asking questions, um, swapping referrals is a huge one. The MRP page is actually a great group as well. I just out of curiosity, how many of you guys have your military relocation professional certification? Very cool. We call it MRP because it's a mouthful, right? <laughs> um, it was great. I actually helped contribute to that course and it, it was cool because we wanted to provide something that would give people kind of the basics of, you know, understanding the acronym of languages we speak. You think you have real estate acronyms, the military is a whole different world. Um, understanding basic ranks and things like that. But we wanted to have just kind of the basics that could overview people, but the secret of success is just knowing who they are and why they need you. And that's why I'm focusing so much, too, on just who are these people. Now, if you understand all of these things and are willing to help people with very short notice, do a little work ahead of time, you're now their very best friend. That's the good news, right? Uh, we had a client appreciation event, and I walked into the kitchen, and I see guests in tears, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, what has happened here? And I realized that the most adorable military family you've ever seen is passionately retelling their story about how the agent saved them. They were overseas, they, he was deployed, they had these little kids, and they needed a rental home, and she had helped them, and they just were standing in the middle of the kitchen sharing this with everybody. You really do become their boots on the ground, and that's a responsibility to not take lightly. If you do your homework up front and be ready to hit the ground running, 
that saves a lot of time and efficiency and, and curves their emotions a little bit. Because quite honestly, a lot of times they won't get the opportunity to come here first. They're shopping from afar. That's when you can use technologies like FaceTime and Skype. I had uh, one family that they were in Colorado. I was in Bristow FaceTiming through a house for them, talking about, can you tear down these walls? Well, let me see what's behind here, and how much would this cost? And yes, we can redo the flooring. Um, but that family, by the way, I originally helped them buy a home here, then sell the home, then I was shocked and proud when he actually gave me a shout out at his retirement ceremony from the military at the Pentagon. They moved to Colorado. I helped them connect with an agent there who could help them with a rental. And now they've just moved back and bought a house in Colorado. And they're also the most likely demographic to buy a house sight unseen because they trust you. And it's more about shelter to them. It's not always about the dream home. Uh, so doesn't that sound a little bit better than driving around, showing 200 houses and writing offers for three years? I literally have clients that we've been writing offers off and on for three years. I, I don't know. But that too is why we have Bomb Bomb here as well. I'm looking forward to him talking because it's another way that we can use video to serve them now, follow up with them later, generate business. Because we were talking again last night and realized, well, FaceTime and Skype are great as long as you have a good signal in the house. <laughs> And I was realizing, yeah, every time I went in the basement, I lost them. So <laughs> bomb bomb should be helpful for us as well. So I wanted to, as I promised, put together top 10 tips. Um, it's just kind of what I've collected over the years of things to get good at. And I hope you have the backs of pages or it's, it's even worth writing, but. <laughs> Number one is work with renters. And I know there's gonna be a sigh because you don't get a lot of money, but it builds your sphere of influence they will refer business to you apologetically. I, I get all the time with, so Jane and Mike are moving here and they really need to find a house, but I think they'll buy at some point. <laughs> and you know, we're happy to help them. They're so loyal. Um, they talk to lots of people. It's harder for them to find a house than it is for a buyer. You know, they have a very short period of time and they have to live with the wallpaper. They can't tear down walls and, and do things to the house. And again, it's also under the lot of pressure of, hey, your household goods are coming. If you don't have a house by this date, they're gonna end up somewhere in storage and I don't know when you're getting them. And they didn't choose to come here. They chose or their family member chose to serve our country, but they didn't necessarily choose to get sent to, you know, wherever their bases sent them. Two, as a rental listing agent, don't sign a lease with a military renter unless they have their orders. It sounds so simple, but I've seen too many agents in our region that just, they're because the pressure is there, that person needs a house, and they're so sure they're going to be assigned to the Pentagon, um, but their orders are subject to change. Three is just one of my pet peeves that I had to put in there. Please stop calling yourself number one. I've already heard a speaker allude to it today, um, but the consumers have figured out that it's statistically impossible for us to all be number one at the same time. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. And just so you don't think I'm just being mean, I'll give you an example, is everyone goes on listing presentations, right? If you think about it, you want someone's listing, and the nature of presenting to someone, it's one-sided. It's a presentation because you're wanting to present to someone. We instead go on marketing consultations. People will pay good money to have a consultation with a professional in an industry where they have a need. And if you're wanting to sell your home, that's marketing. But it's very much a consultation instead. Four, future rentability and resale are huge concerns to these military buyers. So get really comfortable with what renters are looking for in the area where your buyers are shopping. I had a reporter call me once and his big burning question was, you know, do military clients look for single family homes or townhomes? And he was kind of surprised when I said, well, it's more, does it have a garage or does it have, not have a garage? Um, but interchangeably, they don't really care. In, in our experience, it's all you know, single family homes, town homes, but what's gonna rent? That's what they wanna know. They're only gonna be there two to three years. Five, some military families have large animals and some even service dogs. We're seeing more and more service dogs um, being brought. So if you're representing a landlord client, Get really knowledgeable on what the laws are and what you can and cannot do as far as a service dog that's uh, is coming with a renter. 
And we're still trying to figure out why all these people have these huge dogs, but they do. But uh, as one of my agents has just started making it a practice that anytime she has a renter, she says, send me the most adorable, sweetest picture you have of your dog. And she submits it with their application. And she's had ridiculous success of homeowners that didn't even want dogs. And she's placed them with 75 pound Siberian Huskies, 90 pound German Shepherds. I think she has her work cut out for her right now. I'm waiting to see how it goes because she has a family with four dogs, the heaviest of which is 115 pounds. So I told her this week, I said, well, just tell them that, you know, line them all up in order and the dogs all look proportionate now, you know, and the German Shepherd's tiny now, according to the 115 pound one. So we'll, I'm rooting for her on that one. Uh, number six, they often have large furniture pieces. And especially if they've come from Germany or Italy, they very likely have a shrunk and they will absolutely shop for the house as to whether or not the shrunk will fit up the staircase. So you might want to be armed with some solutions for removing handrails um, and a measuring tape. Seven, it's important to refer them to a lender that is not just military, but is VA loan familiar. And an expert is even better than that. That lender has absolutely got to understand what an LES is, that BAH is public information that is calculated based off of where they're assigned, not where they're looking at a house. And they've also got to understand how a funding fee can be waived with disability. There's so many of them all the time, it's critical that we'll say, oh yeah, I do VA loans all the time. And I've had even catastrophes recently and it was all because of BAH or the funding fee, honestly. Eight, know the different meanings <coughs> between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. <laughs> Don't wish anyone a happy Memorial Day. And I'll just leave that one out there. Uh, nine, they move so often, they like having some kind of memory of the home they left behind, and a Christmas ornament is a great idea. We were actually featured in Inman for the Christmas ornaments we were using. There, you should be able to find an artist in your area that for maybe $20 to $40, you just give them a photograph of your client's house, and they can hand paint it on the front of an ornament. Very realistic. You could put their name, you could put the date. Um, with us, we kind of cheat because our logo is at home, so we put the logo on the back because it's still kind of homey. Um, but that's a really great memento of things to give them. And then 10, learn to talk in military time. So with that, I tried to talk a little bit faster to get us on track, um, but I have appreciated being here with you today, and I hope to see you on the canal cruise at 1600. <laughs> And number 11, form bonds with amazing people like this to refer your clients <laughs> to because they will make you look spectacular as well. We try.